Well, it took a little bit longer than it should have done, but that's because I haven't practiced. The more times I come out here, the better I'm going to be. So, yep, on the on the cords, got the tree uggers, got the whoopee slings. That's what I was looking for, not cords. I need to practice with them. But yeah, I'll sell it now. So my head is going to be in this end. It should be slightly higher than my feet. I'm not going to know until I actually sit in. Which I'm going to try now. I'm just going to make sure that the whoopee slings are set so they don't collapse. And all I'm going to do is just sit on my hammock just to prove to everybody that a 6mm cord can hold my weight. Outlaw Outdoors, or Out of Doors, if he's put it up yet, you will see that um, it was a bit too high and I struggled to get in and somebody thought it was funny. Anyway, so that's the hammock up. I need to um, pull it out a bit. What I should have in here is some other cords, but I don't think I have. They were the uh, black elastic, and they're supposed to be for the for the netting. There's a little hole here where you pierce these, push these through. Did use these last week, so it should be a little bit easier than what it was last week trying to get these in. Famous last words. I don't know why. I think my... Oops, there's only one way. We'll go in. Need to have a little bit of patience. Something I don't have. feeling the um, cords are either at home or no, I think they're at home that's what it actually looks like up you have part of underneath where you can put Where you put your sleep mat or your roll mat, thermal roll mat, totally up to you. Apparently some people actually sleep in there but I don't see the point of that. I'm not going to put anything in there, it is summer still. Uh, last week it was uh, too warm so... I'm not even going to put up my under blanket, there's no point. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with this, so I'll try it out later to see if it's pulling too hard. But this will go down some with me in it. Not too much, it might be okay. I'll try it now. No time like the present. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There was me checking my pockets, make sure I ain't got nothing sharp in there to pierce through the hammock. I forgot about the tent peg bag. I believe... There they are. There they are. These are the cords I was on about. 
they were elasticated cords, so they're going to give a little bit. Bear with me a little while, and I'll put them on. Somebody told me last week, I think it was uh, Zero Pence's son. He told me that MCQ Bushcraft, he uses like uh, key rings. Uh, yeah, key rings. He puts them across the um, ridge line for the loops, and then the actual cord goes through the key rings. So um, it doesn't damage the cord, the loops. There you go. So I should. Be able. To get in here. And lay down. So give it a go. Tuck in a t-shirt, I don't want I don't think you want to see everything. Hey Dave. Outlaw. So yeah. Sit back. Take strain. Net over. Feet up. There you go. Just gotta put a cord on the, um, the zipper there so I can reach and pull that close. But oh uh, yeah, I should be in here with my shoes on, but my actual legs do feel a little bit higher than my head. They're not. About level. Plenty of room at the top here. And yet again, it's held my weight. Nice one, DD. Right, I can. I will go down a little bit. I've got a feeling that I'll probably right, that's fine that's it that's all set up oh, one last thing I forgot about this one I did mention it earlier what this is is the DD hammock mesh hammock what I'm going to do now attempt to tighten up my hammock now I did watch some videos last weekend before Dave showed me made it look a little bit simple simpler and I'm going to try to see if I can do this without um, having to look at a video. If you go through, you go over twice. Dave said three times, but I'm going to go twice. Pull tight. I used Dave's bungees. He had some little bungee clip on there, and when it pulls tight, it you know doesn't do any damage. Not that these 
will do any damage. There you go, look nice and tight. Looks a little bit better, they look a bit stupid, but hey ho. What I will do, is once I find the zip, DD Dura 2, this is the extra large size. And I'm quite surprised it actually does fit. Uh, I think a few people had some issues with this sleeping bag. Saying it's a bit too uh, cold. But I didn't find it cold last weekend. I actually uh, took it out after the first night and left it uh, folded up on my chair because so I was too warm. The good thing about this bag is it has a foot box so you can actually put, keep your shoes on and just in case you need to get up in a hurry, keep your shoes on, put them in there, uh, keep, keep your bag nice and clean inside. It's the same material inside and it is also insulated. But I believe uh, Carl R195, um, even with this, got cold feet and he had to wear several pairs of socks and whatnot. So, like I said, I ain't had no issues with it yet, but then it is summer. It's what I think they call a maggot bag. It has a zip in the centre. Again, I didn't have no issues with that. I know a lot of people don't like that. I think uh, when you're my size, I think you appreciate it being in the middle. It makes it easy, you don't have to try to do this, you just do this. So I like it, I prefer it, and if I did get another sleeping bag, I think I would get one with a zip in the centre anyway. So. Right, just need my pillow. Anyway, in goes the pillow. I already know I'm going to be way too hot in that. I don't think I'll be having a sleeping bag in there, but I will try it. If it does get too hot, I'll just throw it out. I normally have my chair here, so I'll just throw it on the chair so it don't get damaged. The only thing I am thinking about of upgrading is the Travel Bibby Hammock. I want to go for a frontline one, which has got the round hoops. It's a bit bigger, recommended by Foxy. But that was before one Tigress had made their pop-up hammock. not yet seen that on the video. I did watch the Edal, yeah, it was the Edal, and I have watched most of the 1942 weekend, and I haven't yet seen the hammock, so I might have to rewind a bit and have another look. But the idea is brilliant. Just makes you wonder why nobody else has done it yet. But I bet they do now, anyway. But before I, um, shut up the net, stop the flies getting in. I'm going to see if I can do a tire bit of 
board onto the zipper so I've got something to pull on rather than trying to lean forward which didn't work at all last week so I didn't bother doing it the idea is to just tie a little bit of a cord on there and once I'm in, I'm in the side of the sleeping bag I can then pull on this to a certain point and then pull on this one and that will close it off inside. I don't know how much of that you've seen from the battery just went, that's the first battery of four. Uh, at the moment I'm restricted on YouTube to only, is it 10-15 minutes, so I think I've just wasted an hour's worth. But hey ho, uh, I might be showing all of that or I might show you just little clips. What I did do, I don't know when the battery went off, or the camera went off, sorry. Um, but what I did notice that the orange light was flashing and I'm sure it was flashing just a few seconds before. I noticed it went off but what I have done I've pinned out or pegged out the back side of the tarp and what I have also done because I'm not too sure is where the zip is for the uh, fly netting I've actually tied a bit of a cord to that so that way then when it, I get into there I can then pull on the cord to close the zipper otherwise I have to try and lean forward and like I said last weekend I couldn't so I didn't so the foot, the foot area was always left open. What I have done is bought my walking poles again. I've done the same last week. I like to have the tarp out so I can see out. I don't want to look at the back but the front I want to look at. So I have them here. Again, sorry for walking off the camera but I have to get them. Should have had them at hand but hey oh. Take a peg. at the top. Rest that for like that for now. Or not. and do the same for the other side. Most walking poles, you can actually take this off. You have a little bit there. If I had uh, one of those holes in the tarp, eyelets in the tarp, I could then put this through the eyelet and it would have caught on there. I don't have one on here. I might, may have to do one myself, I don't know. But for the time being, I'll leave the bung on. Make sure it won't do no damage. There you go. That will be nice set up for the next four days or four nights. This is what it looks like from the inside. I've got my little mesh hammock underneath. I will be putting stuff in there soon. I will have a little bit of a clear up but yeah this is what the hammock looked like from the inside I can't obviously see at the back of me but when I'm laying in the hammock I will be able to look out if I take you in I'll show you what I'll be able to see my head will be down here somewhere around here there's the top of the hammock uh, yep, nope, that's the top of the tarp, even better, and I should be able to see here, I can see, like I said earlier, my car, my car was just over there, got me a little bit concerned then, because I looked at that and thought, who put that car there, that's mine, so yeah, like I said, it is only a stone throw away, about 10 yards, if that, 
Um, I'm thinking about having my fire there, I'm not too sure, or in the centre. There you go, there you can see all my other kit. An old Volt Boy. He's over there somewhere. There he is. Next to a can of lighter fluid. Hmm. I wonder what we're going to use that for. So yeah, I think the fire will be over there. I think it'll be out of the way over there. I'm not too sure. I'll have a little scout around and see what I think. I'll show you the actual hammock set up from outside. So this is roughly where I was thinking about having my fire. I should be able to see out once my weight pushes down on the hammock a bit. Looks like I've either got to drop the mesh net at that end or hire that one. I might just leave it for the moment, put some stuff in there, see what it's like. So the fire will either go here, which I think is probably a, a good area, or over here somewhere. So I can then look for my hammock and I'll be looking out there so maybe I could put the fire in the centre over there but it, I think that's where they had their fire and you don't really want to have a fire in the same pit because there's no chance that's going to grow back then all you'll just be able to do is cover it over and hope for the best but yeah I think don't want to be too close to the trees but I possibly could have it here so yeah I might just do that I might just have it similar to where it was before not mine but where they had it last uh, preppers meet or I might just bring it forward which is a bit silly really you know if there's already a fire pit there I should use that but um, it's either the fire pit or the dunny. I'm hoping that's not the dunny, but not that close. Maybe the reason why the horse flies are buzzing around, but hey oh. Or I might just bring it forward just so it's here. And then I'll be able to see from a hammock. Like I said earlier have it over here but if the wind picks up the wind is coming from the direction where my car is you can see the leaves and that lot moving that way so if I, the fire does get a bit out of hand and it generates sparks them sparks are going to land straight onto my tarp so I'll be silly really to pull it here so I won't I think I'm going to put it just there in between the two trees just about here So yeah, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do the fire. Hi peeps, welcome back. I've decided against what I said earlier. I can't see the point of making another fire pit when there's one here, there's one over there, there's another one around the corner. So it looks like a bit patchy, so I might as well use the one that's already been used. It's about the size I want to use anyway. The only problem with this is when I dig up the earth, I'm going to get to the ash and charcoal. And if I don't separate properly, when I go to refill, I'm going to have a lot of charcoal on top. So I'm going to have to be a bit careful. But like I said earlier, hopefully this will be the fire pit and not somebody's dunny. Otherwise, we're going to have a nasty surprise very soon. Good thing about this is after work is done for me already so all I'm gonna have to do is just make sure I lift the turf, get as much of the grass as I can, all the sods as people call them. I'll leave them to one side, I'll soak them in water 
hopefully when I go put them back then they'll still be okay. It was, but no mind. At least they uh, done a good and by the looks of it. In past experience, I'm using the, uh, the tripod thing I'm going to use. I know I'm going to going to need it bigger than what it is so I'm going to dig it around, dig it up a bit, probably put my gloves on because who knows what I'm going to find in there. Welcome back. As you can see, I've took all the earth out of the earth on the side. I'm going to soak that down a little while just to make sure the sods stay moist. Um, we're under canopy here but it does get a bit warm as you can see. I'm sweating. Um, this is virtually the size of what it was taking it back I've just made it a, a slight circle at the back there it was a like a hammer shape type thing um, I know I've got to pull this back I don't do this it could catch on fire but I am only going to have a small fire in the middle I've got two bags of logs at the moment you might be able to see in the background I'm here for four nights so I'm gonna probably need at least one more bag possibly two I'll see how I get on. I'm only going to do small fires and I'm only going to do the fires cooking the stew. I know I'm doing the stew tomorrow. I might also be making a loaf of bread tomorrow before the stew. So for a good five hours tomorrow I'm going to need the fire going. I ain't going to go no deep with what I am. I don't see the point of doing so. Um, what I do, did notice is I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. When I was digging it up I found some flint. And as we all know, that at that in a fire is a dangerous thing that can shatter flip. Um, so that can be quite lethal. So if you ever see any of that in your fire pit, dig it out if you can. But yeah, I think I'm ready to go. I might clear some of this back, but I'm only going to have a little fire. Some of the grass is going to catch. It always does. There's not much you can do about that. It is dry. It is warm. So I'm going to get a towel dry up a little and put my tripod up. Hi guys, welcome back. They call this the upside down fire. You light at the top and it works its way down. I sometimes use ferro rod or Christian rod for fire still. Um, but today I think about using the lighter. Save a bit of time, but not just any lighter. This lighter. Now this is what you call a lighter. Now I've put some lighter fluid on there, so if it goes boom, that's the reason why. But yeah, that ain't a lighter. This is a lighter. Takes a while to get going, but what do you expect? back in a minute when we have a roaring fire. As you can see, it seems to be working all right. It's going okay. I'll leave it now to see how it goes. As you can see, it's starting to crumble. It should hold. Hopefully it'll hold enough to take the next layer. And that should be okay, really. Start cooking my dinner. But yeah. My little tripod I made using 
leftovers from a trampoline we had in the garden. Seems to work well. I'll use it at the Bush Car Show. A lot better then, in better condition. But it seems to be okay. I'm sure that's going to cook my dinner. My birthday dinner. Lovely. Right, bring you back later, guys. I've got the pork belly on now. I've got a pork barbecue pork rub on it I wrapped it in foil and I've done that because I'm hungry and I want it to cook quick so by wrapping it in foil I can place it closer to the flames which I have done it's bubbling away as we speak so hopefully that's going to be okay I'm going to put some small potatoes around the fire some onions with mushrooms and some peppers to serve a nice little mix. So I have pork on the griddle. I have mixed vegetables there. I have potatoes there. And I have a little bit of pork there with the rub on just so I can have a little taste, see what it's like. Hopefully these won't burn through, it won't burn through the um, tin foil and I'll be able to have my dinner shortly. You see on the fire, I've got my pork on the go. It actually looks very black in the pitch, <laughs> but it's not. There is some char on it, but not as black as what it looks like in the picture. Could be because it's now starting to get dark underneath the canopy, so... So yeah, I've got some uh, vegetables on the go, they're cooked now. Just had a little bit of the pork, I cut a little bit off earlier and put it in a different tin foil and had a little taste of it. They yeah, taste okay, I quite like it, it's a nice rub on there. But with pork you got to make sure it's cooked, so I'm going to leave this for a little bit longer, see what happens.